Hello friends and welcome back to day two of Gathering Information set review of Ixalan. Ooh, this is where it gets interesting and exciting. Well, I think the creatures are really the exciting part as a limited player, but you know, you've got to put everything else into context. So, That's fair. Um, yesterday, or last time, we covered all of the creatures from Ixalan, as well as the spells that create creatures. So if you're looking for um, that uncommon that makes three vampires, we reviewed that yesterday. <laughs> that's right. Um, because that's all it does is make creatures. Mm -hmm. Today, we'll be covering the other non-creature spells, artifacts, and lands. And that includes the things like uh, removal, combat tricks, utilities, um, fixing, all the things that, you know, help you cast those creatures so you can win. Mm -hmm. So before we get started, we should give a little context for especially the removal, because uh, we need to know what it'll kill to know how good it is. So yesterday we did all the creatures, but our findings we're going to kind of talk about right now. Um, Tams, where do you want to start? Uh, okay, well, we, I guess we can start at the top. So looking at, um, actually, you need to scroll down to start at the top because <laughs> it's actually at the bottom without the, without the, uh, there we go. Okay, so there's a lot of incidental life gain and life link in this set, um, more so than in a lot of other sets we've seen recently. Okay. So just the incidental life gain. So that's uh, when something casts gain to life or, you know, that kind of thing. You're looking at four, six, nine, ten, eleven pieces, now and that's not at rare. There's no rare in included in there. Are there any purely life gain, or is this all just in re in addition to whatever else it does? There is one piece that says blah 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 gain for life. It's okay. kind of like twofer, uh -huh. um, but that's about it. And as for life link, there is five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine creatures. Nine creatures that give life link. Outside of rare, rare. That's right. So in common and uncommon, we've got nine creatures with lifelink. So that's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. All right. As far as power or toughness is, toughness is what really matters yep, when you're talking absolutely. about removal. Um, where I so, don't see ah across the top. <laughs> okay, so most of the um, creatures tend to sit at three. Or lower toughness. There are three to four in each color that have four toughness, but this is including the rares? Uh, no. Uh, yes. 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 And, there and are... then a smattering above, like in the five, six, seven, even eight, nine, and ten um, toughness. But now that's one yeah, each. There are 28 um, one toughness creatures. Wow. That's... Yeah. That's a lot. So, and you're looking at 10, 17, uh, oh, geez, almost that in two drops. Two toughness in, creatures? In two toughness creatures. So it looks like your standard removal of a lightning strike or even a shock is going to be fairly useful. And those things that we saw on creatures that was deal one damage to all opponent's creatures or to target um, opponent's creature... It's going to get a lot of things. And this is not really including all of the tokens running around. Right. Um, so Which are all three drops or lower. Like the yeah. the biggest token is the 3-3 three, three dinosaur with trample. Mm -hmm. But that just gives us some sort of context for looking at whether, you know, something that will do two damage to something is going to hit a lot. It's going to hit a lot. Okay. Cool. So bearing that in mind, uh, we will start off with our set review in white. Mm -hmm. All right, our first uh, white instant is a piece of removal. Four and a white for Bright Reprisal. It's an instant and uncommon. It destroys target attacking creature, and you get to draw a card. So that's pretty expensive for this effect. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pretty narrow, too. Uh, it's narrow, but it's not as narrow as deal three damage or deal five damage. And what was it? Um, deal five, da five damage is usually three mana to... Something like that, yeah. Now, it is only attacking creature, not attacking or blocking creature. Hence so. the me saying it's kind of narrow. Yeah. Um, but it is a cantrip. Yeah, it draws you a card. Um, 
it's it really telegraphs itself though so like if yeah. your opponent um sees that you're leaving your mana up they might get suspicious that you have one so mm -hmm. it's probably not going to get great value uh there's probably better removal out here i wouldn't pick these highly no, if I see this, it's not making me want to go in white. I will take one if I'm low on uh, removal. I'll probably run... I, I might even run two in a deck, but I'm not going to pick them over no. anything I actually want to run. No, and we'll see uh, We'll see in white if there's something better than this. All right, well, next up we've got Demystify. I believe this is a reprint, or at least a, a functional reprint, for a single white. It's an instant at common. Destroy target enchantment. So instant speed, kill an enchantment. How do you feel about that? Um, it's a sideboard card. It's fine. It's it's well costed. Yeah, you're not gonna main board it. Uh, I haven't seen. You know what? Hmm. I don't I, think. I don't know. Um, have we seen? Well, we're gonna find out. I was gonna say, have we seen any um, like O ring type? things or pacifism type. I still think I just boarded in against that. Yeah, I think this is definitely a sideboard mm -hmm. card. I mean, you may, if there turns out to be a lot of enchantment in um, your sealed pool, you may want to main board one, but I would sideboard this otherwise. Uh, even in sealed, well, yeah, I guess we'll find out, but uh, you'll be able to pick these up whenever. They're common and people aren't going to want them. Yeah. yeah. Next we have Ixalan's Binding. This is one of the story spotlights for the... Um, set in fact the first one three and a white for an enchantment at uncommon <laughs> what keep reading you don't know why i'm giggling when ixlon's binding enters the battlefield exile target non <laughs> non land permanent an opponent controls until ixlon's binding leaves the battlefield here's something to sideboard for <laughs> yeah definitely to sideboard against your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card Eek. so this is an o-ring it's expensive usually these effects cost three mana but it means that you don't only get the one that uh you're getting you get any others in their hand or library that they haven't cast yet yeah so this is definitely something that if it gets cast against you and you're also in white Probably this is probably worth sideboarding a uh, an enchantment removal against. I also think this is pretty high pick. I think I wouldn't be unhappy to first pick this. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Salem agrees. <laughs> Legion's Judgment, two and a white for a sorcery at common. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. So this is a lot like a. Um, Oh, was it Vanquish the Smite the Monstrous? Mm -hmm. Vanquish the Foul? I can't remember. It, the, the one that is power four or greater. Mm -hmm. So this will kill a thing that you want it to kill. Mm -hmm. It's at sorcery speed, but um, this is kind of the the removal that white gets at common. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fairly high pick. Um, not as high as a good threat. So yeah, I would... Yeah. If there's any other white card that's good in the pack, I'd probably try to wheel this and mm -hmm. not pick but it first. But you can be but... sure that you are going to see, unless you are up against a specific, specific deck with a lot of small things, there's a lot of four and greater toughness That's true. It should be pretty good powered around. in this set, and it is power, though, power four or yeah. greater. Yeah. So it's not, uh, it doesn't care about the big toughness things. No, it's... Um, you you could run one in your main deck, or you could sideboard it um, yep. against a deck that has a bunch of this stuff. We'll find out. Pious Interdiction. Three and a white for an enchantment aura at common. Enchant creature. When Pious Interdiction enters the battlefield, you gain two life. And Enchanted Creature can't attack or block. So this is an expensive arrest. No, pacifism. Mm -hmm. um, pacifism usually costs two mm -hmm. or three if you have some sort of uh, bonus with it. Uh, gaining two life and bringing it to four mana, I think this is not great, but it still does just kill something. Yep. Basically. I think you're going to see people snapping them up. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I'm used to pacifism being... Cheaper than yeah, this. but so far we haven't seen inexpensive good removal from white yet, so this may be what you're getting. No, and I mean you can just it it is removal. 
if the creature still stays there, but it can't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't work on utility creatures so well or things with good abilities, but uh, yeah, you might want to pick one up. I'm not picking this highly, at least at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Rallying Roar is two and a white for an instant at uncommon. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Untap them. This I rather like. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> creatures, so all of them, get plus one, plus one, and you get to untap them. This is, um, it, it feels a lot like um, the Trial of Solidarity. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's obviously better than this, mm -hmm. but um, I think one of these would be good in a, uh, in a white deck, mm -hmm. especially a white-green deck. Yeah. You know, when you've got bigger creatures already. Mm -hmm. um, in a white-red deck or something with a little smaller, uh, untapping your creatures doesn't really do much since they're probably going to trade off anyway. But giving the extra power to a bunch of 1-1s one is exactly what you want to do. Power and toughness, which yeah. could matter. Mm -hmm. So, hmm, where would you pick this up? I'd pick this up as soon as I know that I'm going to be doing something in white because... Yeah, you always want one? Well... We're in limited, right? So it's mm -hmm. not likely that I'm going to be drafting a not creature heavy deck. At least for me. There are people who like their Spells Matters decks, but um, for me, or... if I'm going to know that I'm going to have, you know, 15, 16, 17 creatures um, or more, I want it. This really does change the math in a race, I guess. Oh, yeah. Um, I will pick it up on the on the wheel. Mm -hmm. I'm not really interested in taking this early, but I would probably run one. I think I like anthems more than I should, to be honest. So <laughs> That's fair. Alright, Ritual of Rejuvenation. This was the one that I was talking about. It gains you four and then does another thing as okay. well. Okay, so it's two and a white for an instant at common. Gain four life. Draw a card. So it is just pure life gain. It does cantrip. Like, it's not spending a card on it it's spending three mana mm -hmm. um which is maybe good enough but i i would really want the extra life before i'm gonna put a card like this in my deck when i could just be playing a creature yeah this is a 23rd card i do, oops i under sold myself on creatures okay i guess i'll put this in there yeah for me it's probably going to be the 24th card yeah like yeah. the thing that i'm is just outside of the round when i saw I just... this card initially i was really hoping that there was going to be something that really wanted you to be gaining life like every time you gain life your opponent loses that much life mm, yeah and in that case this would be fantastic or at least highly playable sure because it's well not even well it would be playable yeah with the draw card it would be okay it feels a lot like um, the cycling card from Amonkhet, but it's not as good as that. Yeah. Yeah. It's meh. Sheltering Light. White for an instant at uncommon. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Scry one. I love these kind of cards. Um, God's Willing. Um, I, I think this may be a reprint, or it may not. I think this was in an, somewhere in Innistrad. I'm not sure. But uh, a single white protect a thing from uh, removal um, mm -hmm. feels feels pretty good. And then you get the, the scry off it as well. I do like scry. So if you are ahead, you can just burn it to <clears throat> actually scry. Like, it's not dead if you don't have any creatures or mm -hmm. if you... Um, I mean, you're not in a great position then, but it's meant to be combat trick removal, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I pick these up, the first one, um, over mediocre creatures, usually, because mm -hmm. if I have good creatures already, then I want a way to protect them. Yeah. And that's where I tend to pick these up. Where would you take it? Uh, yeah, probably the same. Okay. I'm not over good removal, but... Well, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Slash of Talons is white for an instant at common. Slash of Talons deals two damage to target attacking or blocking creature. So this is fun. It's a white shock. Mm -hmm. I will definitely run several of these. Several? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You think that there are enough two toughness things to uh, get with these? With one and two, there's over 50. Okay. 
one and two toughness creatures. So yeah, I think you're going to get your money's worth with any deck that is building to, to a curve. So where do you take them? Uh, mid-pack, probably. Mid-pack? Yeah, after you get all your fun, exciting things. <laughs> so it's not uh, going to draw you to it, but you'll be happy to pick them up wherever? Yeah, right. now this may, ch this may change for me. Okay. Um, we have yet to see any really impressive removal at a reasonable cost, Yeah. but uh, it's okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I like the thought of, you know, putting this in a, um, a more controlling deck and then just passing and letting them swing in with their two drop and then their three drop and yeah. taking them both out with a couple of these. To be clear, where this makes a difference to me as opposed to the red kind of version of this is the creature has to be attacking or blocking. Yeah. As opposed to the, the beauty of the um, shock, which shock. will just... Take you know, it out. they go to put it down, you're like, ah, I don't think so. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah that's it's not why just, I don't like it as much. It's not that good. I, How many would you play? Probably two. two yeah. Depending. And then if I have more on the sideboard and I see a really aggressive, low... Board them all in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Vampire's Zeal is white for an instant at common. Target... Creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If it's a vampire, it gains first strike until end of turn. So plus two, plus two for white. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. This almost acts as removal. Yeah. Uh, in a very white way. It's like um, destroy target blocking creature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so plus two, plus two might be enough just to save your creature in combat anyway from a trade. Mm -hmm. And then... If um, if not that, then giving it first strike will definitely do that job. Mm. So I'm almost more interested in this than in the uh, the white shock. Interesting. I would I would take this um, the first one reasonably highly. I think it's like it's almost a giant's growth. Sort of, yeah. Here we're onto the rares now. Ashes of the abhorrent. One and a white for an enchantment at rare. Players can't cast spells from graveyards or activate abilities of cards in graveyards. So that's directly hosing the last set. <laughs> Boy, howdy. This is going to see some sideboard in um, standard, I would think. I imagine. Whenever a creature dies, you gain one life. Meh. I don't know that that is worth it. I, I think... Yeah, this is one of those cards that's seeded for, you know, maybe standard, possibly um, other formats, uh, commander, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Whenever a creature dies, you gain one life. I, I don't think it's good enough. I don't think in this set it's, uh, it's great. I think I'd just rather play a random 2-2 two -two or a 3-1. Yeah. 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 Axis of Mortality. Here's a weird one. Four, white, white, for an enchantment at Mythic. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may have two target players exchange life totals. Now this is definitely a commander, commander, card. commander shenanigans. <laughs> you know, I'm going to take you and you. Yeah, you're going to earn a lot of friends with this card. <laughs> and a lot of enemies. <laughs> yeah. Now hey, we... Gary, you know you're at 1. Would you like to be at 35? Because uh, Carl's at 35. and uh, He maybe keeps attacking me. and Yeah. That, uh... So for limited play. For limited play, I just don't see it. I was racking my brain yesterday trying to figure out how, and I don't, I don't see it. The only thing I can think, and the thing again, if this was... Let's say this was two and a white. Okay, so we're we're making it a a random curve filling spot rather yeah. than. So let's say it's a, a three drop. Okay. This sits on the battlefield and really messes with your opponent's game plan. Because they don't want to attack you and knock your life down because then you'll just switch with them. So like what do you do? Hmm. Um, I think it's a little hanky for actual play. I'm sure we're gonna see people try it. 
I don't know that changing the mana cost would really, like, change anything. Say, if you get to six and your opponent can swing for almost lethal, mm -hmm. then they're just going to hold out until they can actually swing for lethal. Yeah. Right? It doesn't actually do Well, that's why anything. I think earlier in the game it would have more game impact. Hmm. Or at least mess with their game a lot more. Um, I, we're going to see it come down and played, you know. Oh, I'm going to play it. <laughs> I'm going to play this card. If I'm, I, I almost hope I get it first pick in my very first online draft. Yeah, that'd be funny. Just to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think this is playable. I do not recommend taking it. No. I think it is um, uh, a the trap. A, a trap, definitely. I was trying to think of what was the red um, spell in the last set, the end, the turn spell. This is that for this set. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's the weird thing that doesn't actually do anything. There'll be an odd person who gets it and makes it work by sheer happenstance. Force of will. <laughs> yeah. 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 Un unplayable, I'm going to say. Sanguine Sacrament is X, white, white. For an instant at rare, you gain twice X life. Put Sanguine Sacrament on the bottom of its owner's library. Now, uh, X is... In the cost, let's say X is 1. You're paying 3 to gain 2 life. If X is 2, you're paying 4 to gain 4 life. Right? Yep. If X is 3, you're paying 5 to gain 6 life and so on. What? Where is X that you're comfortable with it? I'm not playing it. You're not playing it at all. <laughs> no. If, because, again, if there was some reason for light, you wanting to be gaining life, sure, but... Put Sanguine Sacrament on the bottom of its owner's library um, it is a great way to um, make people think something is playable that's not. Yeah. Because basically what you're saying is put it into the graveyard. Like, you're never going to see it again for the rest of the game. Well, no, because if you draw it again, you're, the game is over regardless, and it's not in your favor, generally speaking. What I do want to do is I want to build a standard deck where mm -hmm. I've got, like, well, a playset of four of these, and then I can never deck myself, and I can never lose to damage, and I just wait for my opponent to deck themselves. Interesting. But how do you never deck yourself? You're because when it. you cast it, you put it on the bottom of your library. So if it's the last card in your library, you draw it, you cast it, put it back on top of your library, draw it next turn. I see. So you've always got another card. I see what you're saying. This That's is the spooky. Um, yeah, it's it's like an elixir of immortality. In so what we're saying is don't don't play this card. No, no, <laughs> not in limited. I don't think this is a limited playable card, but it's going to be. Somebody will play it. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. Settle the Wreckage. Two white white for an instant at rare. Exile all attacking creatures. Target player controls. That player may search his or her library for that many basic land cards. Put those cards onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle his or her library. Oh boy, they're giving us some real stinkers that look amazing. <laughs> this is a four mana... One-sided wrath that ramps your opponent into their end game, and puts all of the creatures that you just killed, or well, not the exiled one, but anything up to this point in the game that have died back into the. No. Oh no! It's no, no, just no. the library. Just okay, them. cool. All right. Uh, cool. They just they get lands instead of creatures. Mm. So, m maybe... Sure, it's a way to get them out of the, the way to swing for lethal? Sure. Like, what kind of deck actually wants this? Uh, an aggressive deck that just wants to clear all of the creatures out of the way in Alpha Strike, I guess? But an aggressive deck isn't going to be attacked, because it's exile all attacking creatures. Yep. So, yeah, it's just bad. I mean, you can exile <laughs> your own creatures to ramp into your end game but i there no. could be some sort of constructed thing there but sure i don't think, I don't so. think this is limited playable so no. far all of the rares have looked pretty bad to me yeah all right well, agreed 
And that's it for White. So what do we think? So White has... So so now we know... Some real stinkers. That uh, White's removal is um, expensive pacifism type effects and... Yep. The a, kind of thing you expect to see in white. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be probably pairing white with something else that, like, black or red that has other removal as well. So, mm-hmm. um, it's okay. I'm disappointed with the rares. Um, it certainly provides the opportunity for some interesting constructed ideas. Well, take solace in the fact that there were only five or six non-creature rares in white, and the rest were really strong-looking creatures. That's true. So, all right, on to blue. You want to start us off? Sure. So here is our first blue. Cancel. It's a it's a perennial favorite. One blue blue for an instant at common. Counter target spell. All right. Um, it's what we get for counter spells. It's marginally playable. In, uh, in sealed, you'll play it. In draft, you probably won't. Um, pick them up wherever because they're going to come to you. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Pretty much. Chart a course. One blue for a sorcery at uncommon. Draw two cards. Then discard a card unless you attacked with a creature this turn. So that's one and a blue, right? Sorry, yes. One and a blue. So... It, it's kind of got raid. It does. So discard a card unless you attacked with a creature. Basically, it, it says raid. Mm-hmm. Draw two cards. Yep. I think it's good. Um... One and a blue, draw two cards, yeah. Seems yeah, that seems good. fine. If I'm in blue, I'm going to take one, that's for sure. How highly do you take them? Not first pick. I mean, I want to be in blue before I grab it. Okay. But so, uh, I, I'm not a blue player, so... Is it going people... to push you into blue? No. No? Okay. Um, I, I like card draw, but it doesn't generally push me into blue. Unless we're talking, like, you know, treasure cruise. But uh, we've seen the, the end of that. I imagine I'm going to fourth pick this at some point. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Deep Root Waters. Two and a blue for an enchantment at Uncommon. Whenever you cast a merfolk spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue merfolk creature token with hexproof. So we we noticed after we recorded yesterday that we didn't actually see any of those 1-1 one, one blue merfolk creatures. And it turns out this is the only card in the set that makes them. Yeah. Um... Now, we didn't put it in the creature review because it doesn't actually make any merfolk on its own. You have to have other merfolk. Yeah. I think... I I understand why they didn't bring the tribal uh, type back because they could have made... It it would have been really interesting to have Mm -hmm. tribal spells merfolk so that you cast, say, that draw spell and it's a merfolk spell for this but yeah, they, they don't that, support that anymore they had that at some point I remember it was Laura one yeah is that what it was yeah um but they decided it wasn't worth trying to um get everything mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. up to date mm-hmm. so basically this card says if you get if you have a merfolk you get an extra merfolk mm-hmm. for three mana what do we think if I have Seven or eight merfolk? Seven or eight, that's your number? Uh, You're maybe, play this? maybe five or six. Sure, because it's three mana for six or seven one ones. But not much more than not much less than that. With seven or eight merfolk in your deck, you're going to get two maybe one ones off of this. Maybe three. Maybe three. Like it's already turn three. You're only going to draw maybe half your deck. I, I don't like this. Um, I don't think it's worth um, the three mana. Okay, well, let's compare this to um, in the last set. No, because that was any time a creature entered the battlefield. So any time a creature. Yeah, period. So this and is... it made your white creatures cheaper. All your white creatures. Sure. You're thinking of the monument. Yeah. So if yeah. you're if you are running straight up only merfolk, will you run it? If I have, like, 17 merfolk, yes. Fair enough. There we if, go. If There's I your have, threshold. Okay. If I have um, four merfolk and this comes back to me on the wheel mm-hmm. of the first pack, then sure, I'll take it, I'll run it, and I'll pick all the merfolk from that point on. Yeah. But I'm not going to pick this up unless I have solidly 12 merfolk. 
Mm -hmm. I would need 12 merfolk to play this, I think. Okay. Depths of Desire. Two and a blue for an uncommon instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand and create a colorless treasure artifact token. So again, the treasures are um, tokens that sit there and they have tap and sacrifice this artifact to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Um, there are many cards that make these, but we just uh, I, I just wanted to make sure we had that in there once. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a... I can't remember what it was. One in a blue returned something to mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is two in a blue, but you get a treasure. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't think the treasure is good enough? It's giving you the mana back, but you have to have the three mana up in the first sure, place. Sure, sure. I like these kinds of um, bounce. Oh, me too. Effects Unsummon is like is great. amazing. Yeah, I just. <clears throat> this is too expensive. I think it's fine if you're looking for, also to um, have something to do with that mana. If you're using it as, oh, hey, look, I'm more easily splashing this other thing that I wasn't going to run than yeah. yes, but okay. eh. All right. It's fine, but late late pick for me. Late pick up? Yeah. I have a feeling that based on the removal we saw in white, I want to say this is a late pick up, but I imagine this is going to get higher and higher in the pick order the later in the format we go. If you're running blue white, you mean? Uh if you're running blue anything, just based on the fact that white only has so much removal. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, red and black always have the best removal, and blue's removal is always a little sketchy, but mm -hmm. it seems like if you're in blue, this is going to be the thing that you're going to want, even though it doesn't look like it right now. Okay. Well, let's see what else they have to offer. All right. Dive down. A one single blue for an instant. Target creature you control gets plus O oh, plus three and gains hexproof until end of turn. So this is a functional reprint, I want to say, of Glint. I remember playing a card like this in my Toughness Matters deck back in uh, Cons of Tarkir because it gave effectively plus three plus three to my creatures because they were dealing damage equal to their toughness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of similar-ish to the, um, you know creature gains indestructible till the end of turn. Yeah, yeah. Because plus three is a fair amount, mm -hmm. but it's not quite that. Not quite that good. It does gain hexproof, though, and it's a single blue. Mm -hmm. So It is cheap. And it's common. I imagine picking these up, but not highly. Yeah, I'll probably run one, two, maybe. We'll see. I don't know if I'd run two. I'd need a reason to run two. Like bad removal? Yeah. <laughs> Favorable wins... Favorable wins. Oh, she's giving me a look because she's supposed to be re reading the That's cards. That's right. I'm like, you're getting really excited here. Favorable wins. One and a blue for an enchantment at uncommon. Creatures you control with flying get plus one, plus one. Hey, how many flyers did we see? Like, 12? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, man, am I going to first pick this? I don't think so. Ask me if I'm going to first pick this. Are you going to first pick this? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Unless the rare is, like, super, super good. I love flyers so much. I probably shouldn't first pick it, but it's not that good. Like no, you're already you're giving your creatures that are already good and evasive an upside. This is a win more card. Absolutely. But, uh, it's also a reprint from I want to say Avison Restores. But I totally want to play with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's okay. You think it should be a after the wheel pickup, but you're going to pick it much. More highly yep, than that? pretty much. So people don't do as I do. Yeah, okay. Lookout's Dispersal. Two and a blue for an instant at Uncommon. Lookout's Dispersal costs one less to cast if you control a pirate. Counter target spell unless its controller pays four. Okay, so if you control a pirate, it's better than a mana leak. Mm-hmm. If not, it's unplayable. <laughs> I mean... Pays four is a lot, but, well, pays four is a lot. Maybe not unplayable. What do you think? From the non-blue player, I would I would run it. 
Yeah. Because it looks good. It looks okay to me. Um, Paying four extra is a lot. Yeah. Especially later game when they're... Or not later game, but especially as they curve out and they're trying to cast their big things. So, yeah, if, if you're... You're saying if they get to six and they try to slam their big thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I... You know what I'm probably going to do? I'm probably going to pick it and play it in my main board and then side it out in game two. And mm. then just have them worrying about it the whole time. Because <laughs> you are a monster. Um, where do you pick it up? Reasonably highly? I think so, yeah. I think, like... Yeah. Once you're in blue, as soon as you have a good blue card, you'd be happy picking one of these up? I think so. How many pirates do you want? Do you even need a pirate for it to be okay? Not For me, no. I think, I think three mana is relatively... I mean, it's fairly easy to keep up, and it's not terrible. It is a cost, and it's not just straight counter a spell. Yeah, it is. But it with, is. And you shouldn't listen to me because I don't play blue. But four mana is... A lot, so it's almost counter spell. Mm hmm. Huh. Interesting. Actually, that's a really good point. Wouldn't you just rather run counter Cancel? Cancel? Uh, you don't have to leave up the double blue. Mm, I guess. I guess. Sure. Navigator's Ruin. Two and a blue for an enchantment at Uncommon with Raid. At the beginning of your end step, if you attacked with a creature this turn, target opponent puts the top four cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So this goes with that terrible, unplayable card that we saw yesterday that uh, causes your opponent to put half their library into their graveyard. These kind of cards <laughs> always irritate me a little bit because you're attacking with creatures, so you're going to kill them on damage probably before they mill themselves out. But four cards is a lot. Mm -hmm. In limited, that's one tenth of their deck. Yep. And you need what? One flyer? One unblockable? Is there an unblockable one one in this set? Mm hmm. There's two unblockable things. <laughs> Remember the thing that you said you didn't want to play? The 2 2 that could become a 3 3 unblockable? For four? Yeah. But that's still going to kill them before they mill out. I don't think this is playable. I think this is a bad card. I think I'm not going to absolutely pick it and then play with it. You totally are. Okay, from the voice of reason... It's a bad card. There's not enough mill support to make this worth running. No. Yes. But what if you got two of them? Then you'd be step and <laughs> moving I will, right along. <laughs> I will smash you with my aggro. One with the wind, one mm. in a blue for an enchantment aura at common. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and has flying. Guess who's taking all of those? If you guessed me, you would be right. Yeah? You think it's good enough? Um, I think I'm gonna play it in my Simic deck and put it on my dinosaurs. <laughs> You're going to put it on your big dumb dinos? Dang, Skippy. Okay, you're you're going to turn your 9-9 into an 11-11 flyer. I'm probably not going to run that 9-9 because I've got a plus 2, plus 2 in flying, so I'll put it on my 6-6. Six, six. Okay. I'm making an 8-8. Eight, eight. Where do you pick it up? Um, impact. I'm, impact? No, like, I'm not. Wherever super. you pick one. It's not a high pick. Whenever there is not a good creature or removal. If it's all like, eh, this is all kind of mediocre, I'll pick it above a filler card. And as how, long as I have creatures. How many do you want in your deck? Two. Two? One or two. Yeah. I would want one, but there you go. But I want two flying dinosaurs. Of course. Opt. Single blue for an instant. Scry one. Draw a card. So, this is our anticipate, strategic planning, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, kind of card. Scry one, and then draw a card for an instant. That seems pretty good. I like it. One blue? How many do you want? All of them. I want to draw all of the cards. For one mana, um, at common, I think you could run a few. There was a card somewhere in the creatures that did a thing if you 
cast a non-creature spell, right? I don't mm, remember. Probably. But if I picked one of those up, I'd want, like, four of these. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of these would you run, and where would you pick it? I would probably run two. Mm -hmm. And I'd probably be wrong, because the answer is probably everyone you see. Um, and I would probably pick it up once I know I'm in blue. Okay. It wouldn't put you into blue, though? No. All right. But again, I'm not a blue player, and I've been accused of not understanding fully the value of drawing cards. <laughs> So. Well, scrying one and then drawing a card is pretty good. It, it is at that. It's the kind of thing that you like to have as a backup for your counter spell in case they don't play anything you want to counter. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if I'm in blue, I'm picking them all up. <laughs> Case in point. Perilous Voyage. One in a blue for an instant and uncommon. Return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. If it's... Con if its converted mana cost was two or less, scry two. I'm, I had trouble parsing that. So if its CMC was two or less, you get to scry. If it's three or greater, you just got to bounce something for two mana, which seems pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is the kind of card that I would pick up highly and would put me into blue. Yeah. I like, I like this a lot better than the three mana bounce spell that we saw before. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, where would you pick it? Once I'm in blue. Once you're in blue? Because <laughs> the it thing is... It wouldn't put you in blue? Uh, no, no. This um, reminds me of Voyage's End from Theros. That was a good card. It was a But very for good me character. to want to go into blue, it, it pretty much has to have wings. Okay, all right. In, in my case, I would be happy um, bouncing their two drop and then setting up my next two draws like early game oh yeah know? you and laura are going to do amazing things with these cards yeah. i am going to be sitting there just attacking with my little aggro cards and your big my dumb big, dinos my my flyers yeah all right pirate's prize three and a blue for a sorcery at common draw two cards create a colorless treasure artifact token okay so this you get the two cards and the treasure for four mana, whereas before it was, what was it, two mana? And you get two cards if you have a treasure? That was the other one? Or was it three mana? I think it was if you had a pirate. No. No, it was if you had a treasure. Or, or no? No. It was one. Oh, I'm sorry, I was, I was conflating the one that made the treasure. Anyway, this is a four mana draw two. What do you think? Sure. How much of a card is a treasure worth? Not Would you much call this a draw three? No? No. Draw two and a half? Sure. It's at sorcery speed, though, so... Meh. Yeah, meh. I'd pick one of these up late. Yep. There are better options for drawing cards. Run a ground. Three and a blue for an instant at common. Put target artifact or creature on top of its owner's library. Looks like Kiora, doesn't it? It does. <clears throat> so, four mana put something on top of the library. It's expensive. It is expensive. Uh, I think you're still going to want to do it. Yeah, it puts their vehicle, it puts their vehicle, <laughs> <laughs> and their creatures. Yeah, I mean, any big creature, then they have to draw it. And, and play cast it, it and again. then wait to attack with it. So yeah, this yeah, is it's okay. probably worth the four mana. I probably don't want more than one though. No. But it's probably going to go highly too. Like it's going to be a high pick. Probably. Siren's ruse, one and a blue for an instant at common. Exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If a pirate was exiled this way, draw a card. Hmm. It's a ghostly flicker kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Huh. So, you pick this up if you have Enter the Battlefield abilities. Mm -hmm. And pirates with Enter the Battlefield abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, you can save your creature from removal with this, which is fine. Um, I don't think it's a high pick. No. No? No. Spell Pierce. Good old Spell Pierce. Single blue for an instant. Counter target non-creature spell unless its controller plays two. 
this is the kind of spell that I love to play against blue players. Yeah. I have one of one of my proudest moments was actually I countered a harmonize with a spell pierce. That's mean. He was out it was his last card and he had four mana. And Aww. I just nope. Monster. Uh-huh. Um that being said, how highly do you take it in limited? Probably not that. Like, you're not countering creatures with it. You probably only board it in against yep. something that you want to Get rid kill. of. Yeah, I'm not um, that excited about it. I also don't think that it's going to be too valuable, although maybe you want to check the price on it. Spell Pierce is played in many formats. Mm-hmm. Um, so if it's a foil spell pierce, you might want to check it before passing it. But I don't think this is a card that I necessarily want to main deck. Nope. All right, on to the rares. Arcane Ad- Adaptation. Two and a blue for an enchantment at rare. As Arcane Adaptation enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. Okay, so this is interesting because up until that last point, I was thinking, well, this isn't doing much if you need to cast, say, Merfolk. But uh, say you get that Merfolk um, enchantment. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have this on the battlefield, all of your other creatures are also Merfolk. Yeah. So you get a 1-1 off of each of them. Mm Mm-hmm. Combo. Live the dream, baby. Live the dream. Six mana combo. <laughs> um, unless you have a really good reason, I don't think this is playable. No. How many... How many creatures... Like... What you am need I trying some, to say? some reason to want a tribal thing. Yeah. Why and not? how many tribes do you want that interact with blue? Uh, two. Merfolk and pirates. Pirates. So, yeah. so if you um, first pick, what is it? Uh, Admiral, what's his name? Mm-hmm. Um, then you can pick this up when it comes to you. But I, I imagine this is one of the ones that'll be wheeling around the table. I think so. And going too. last pick. Yep. Entrance, entrancing Melody. X blue blue for a sorcery at rare. Gain control of target creature with converted mana cost X. So pay two more than whatever the thing is that is causing you the most trouble to kill it and get one of your own. Yep. That seems pretty good to me. That seems pretty sweet. I think that's a first pick. I do too. I think that's just like straight up better than removal in blue. That will make me want... To play blue. Yeah? That will make me want to, yeah. Because I get to take your thing and have it for my own. Cool. Overflowing Insight. Four, blue, blue, blue. For a mythic rare sorcery, target player draws seven cards. So, seven mana to draw seven cards. Do you run this? I mean, I don't. Oh, who am I kidding? I totally do. But you shouldn't. I don't think... There's time. Yeah. I mean, if this is your 7-drop and your opponent um, drops a... What is it? Gish something or other? The big, dumb uh, dinosaur? Mm -hmm. They're going to win that particular combat. Mm -hmm. So, uh, draw 7s are awesome, but... I love the idea of refilling your hand like game, but... Yeah, it can it is it practical? I don't think so. I don't think so. I will pass. You'll pass? Yeah, I think so. Somebody will pick it up at the table and hopefully you'll be able to beat them with, you know, creatures. I would like that. River's Rebuke. Four blue blue for a sorcery at rear. Return all non land permanent target player controls to their owner's hand. So this is a whelming wave. Um Kind of. It's a one-sided whelming wave, so mm-hmm. that's pretty sweet. Yep. You could bounce all your stuff if you wanted to reuse the abilities. 
Sure. Which is and it's non-land, so it's going to get their um, their artifacts as well. Now yeah, their vehicles and whatnot. Is this going to bounce their enchantments? Their um, it'll bounce their treasures and other tokens too, and they're not getting them back. And it's going to also bounce any if they're in white and they have. Um, passive oh, pacifism effects? effects, yeah. Because they still control them? That's true. So you could even free up a couple of your creatures for a turn if they have pacifisms. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that's funny. I Yeah, first pick. This is going to change the flow of a game. Yeah. At six mana, I think it's worthwhile. So at six mana, this is worthwhile, but at seven mana, draw seven cards is not. Drawing seven cards does nothing to affect the board. Mm-hmm. And seven mana is at probably two turns later than six. Yep, agreed. Search for Azkanta. One and a blue for a legendary enchantment at rare. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put it into your graveyard. Then, if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you may transform Search for Azkanta. So, first, what do you think of that side? Just the one and a blue... At the beginning of your upkeep, scry, basically. Uh, meh. Yeah? Meh. I like it. I think being able to scry every turn... I mean, blue is not the color that necessarily drops a creature onto. So but being able to set up your top decks for the rest of the game seems good. Sure, but here's the thing. You don't get to put it on the bottom of your library. You have to throw it into the into the Sure, but if you don't graveyard. want to draw it, what's the difference between putting it on the sure. graveyard? Sure, alright. I think that's fine, just on its own. Okay. So when it transforms... What is it? It turns into Azkanta, the Sunken Ruin, which is a legendary land that can tap to add blue to your mana pool, and you can pay two and a blue and tap it to look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put it into your hand, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So, better than draw a card. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, I suddenly am all in on this card. Yeah? yeah. You're, you, <laughs> that's good enough? Yep. I think the front side is good enough, but the back side is absolutely worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, again, these do become lands, so it does ramp you into that spot where you'll be able to cast your end game threat. What was the cost of this? Two. Okay, fair enough. Alright. Spell Swindle. Three blue blue for an instant rare. Counter target spell. Create X colorless treasure artifact tokens. Oh, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Yeah. Five mana counter spell. Traditionally, they do something fairly decent and are still not playable. Mm-hmm. So I don't think this is playable. Oh, I'm passing on this. Too. <laughs> You're passing. Yep. Yeah. Um. I don't know. You have to really want a way to make treasures, I guess. But I think there are better ways. I agree. All right. So what do we think of blue? Um. It's interesting. <laughs> There's some stuff I like. Like I like bounce effects. Mm-hmm. Uh, card draw is good. At least there is some card draw, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really like the rares. Um, I think the uncommons are going to be uh, high picks, but the commons are going to be mostly pick them up whenever. That's what I took away. Anyway, moving on to black. All right, black, the... Uh, the Traditionally strong removal color? Yeah, and we're starting off with... Uh, removal spell. So, three black black. Contract killing. Sorcery at common. Destroy target creature. Create two colorless treasures. So, um, five mana kill, th- kill something. What do you think of that? It's fine. It's a common, which is good. I mean, we're going to need this kind of stuff with all of the giant dragons running around. Mm-hmm. The, you know, straight up destroy. Five mana to destroy target creature has been okay. Like, we had five mana exile something in the last set, mm-hmm. but there's not as much, like, indestructible stuff in this set. And things tend to be bigger. Like, you have to remember we've got all those dinosaurs, so five mana might be cheaper than whatever you're killing. 
And the thing is, also, um, in this set, with the exception of, I think, one black spell, whatever's dead is going to stay dead. There's not a lot of graveyard recursion. There's no... Um, mm -hmm. It's not a graveyard set. There's no embalm or anything right. like that. So exile, I think, is a little less imperative. Yeah, so this is probably going to be... Uh, one or two or even maybe three of in any black deck. Mm -hmm. And while I don't think it'll be first pick, you'll pick it up fairly early. Fairly hour. early. Yeah, it's double sure. black, so it's not like you can splash it. But no. you'll if you're thinking, well, I'm in black, I'm picking this up. Yep. Yeah. Costly Plunder. One and a black for an instant at common. As an additional cost to cast Costly Plunder. Sacrifice an artifact or creature. Draw two cards. Now, this is a card that I quite like. Yeah. Do you? Mm-hmm. Okay. I can, I can tell you why. This is the uh, typical um, black draw spell with a cost, but usually that cost is pay a couple of life, which is no big deal. Okay, but bear in mind, we just cast, you know, spent five mana and destroyed their creature and got two artifact token so you got a couple of treasures so you're saying that black has treasure to spare well there's going to be treasures floating around as okay. far as artifacts go they also have um tokens is that i guess that's Vraska. oh yeah that's Vraska smashing mm -hmm. a treasure chest open with somebody else's hand and the thing is black doesn't get a lot of card draw no, it and gets a few pieces of, like, they'll, it'll cost. Yeah, you know? and this is a cost that I think I'm perfectly fine in this set, in this color paying. Okay. All right. So when do you pick it up? Mm, Mid-late. It's, okay. you know, kind of the fill-in. Yeah, it's a replacement level yep. common. But I don't um, mind drawing cards in black. That's, yeah. It's good. Yep. All right. Dark Nourishment. Four and a black for an instant at uncommon. Dark Nourishment deals three damage to target creature or player, and you gain three life. So it's a five mana drain for three that mm. could possibly kill a creature. Oh, I don't know. What do you think of this? We already said that most things in this set have three or less toughness. Yeah. There are a lot of dinosaurs which this just won't kill, and at five mana you kind of want your removal still spell to remove anything considering the last piece of removal we saw was also five mana and it was destroy target creature mm -hmm. i don't know that the gain three life makes it worth the cost i mean if i open it if i'm in black if it wheels around to me i'll take it because i like all of the removal i think i'm more interested in this one just because it's more splashable that is also fair and it's an uncommon so i think i'd take it higher but like you said, gaining three life isn't much, especially when there's a lot of ga gain life in the set. Mm -hmm. Draining for uh, six, basically, like mm -hmm. if you're doing mm -hmm. three to your opponent, is still not really worth five mana to me. So I'd, I'd want to be killing something mm -hmm. with this. So I will still take it and run it, but yeah. I'm not terribly excited. It's not something that's going to make me go into black. Okay. Duress. This is a reprint. Black for a sorcery at common. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. So, non-creature, non-land. That means basically a removal spell, right? Yeah, this is a... Maybe a planeswalker if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, good old workhorse. Um, for me, it's a sideboard workhorse. Yeah. Um, I pick it up late when it wheels around because it probably will. Do you main deck it in sealed? I still don't think I do. I don't. I would 23rd card it if I okay. didn't have something else to play. I'm not a huge hand attack player to begin with. I like to pull it out of the sideboard. I like my hand attack to be able to grab creatures. Or whatever you, know, you like. Just like counter yeah. spells. But know? this is a really good um, piece of sideboard tech against somebody that has some piece of... If you have no enchantment removal and all of their removal yeah. is enchantment based. Sure. It's uh, Or they do happen to pull... You know, the balmy planeswalker. Yep. So, well, um, yeah, I'll bring it in against the planeswalker. For, for sure. sure. But otherwise, <laughs> you know, it's fine. You'll okay. wheel it around and stick it in your sideboard. And you'll want to be patient with Duress if you do play it. Turn one isn't necessarily the best. Like, if you got it turn one, you can play it. But I prefer to play it, say, turn four right before they um, 
get to cast whatever their their five mana kill spell. Yeah, yeah. but um, again, they work better with when you can actually grab creatures. Mm-hmm. This one is non creatures, so I do like this new art for yeah. dress. It's, yeah, it's quite nice. Grim Captain's Call. It's funny. Uh, Captain's Call was a white spell that made tokens. Really? So Grim Captain's Call is two and a black for a sorcery at uncommon. Return a pirate card from your graveyard to your hand. Then do the same for vampire, dinosaur, and merfolk. Oh, this is fun. (laughs) So how do you feel about three mana draw four cards? I really like... I think this card is... I would first pick it and build around it. Yeah, you just make sure I'm going to take one of these, send one of these, send one of these. And I, this might be reason for me to try to get stuff also with treasures or any sort of fixing. So you can kind of maybe go more than two color. I don't know if that's going to be a thing, but okay. it would be fun right. to uh, it would be fun to play with. Well, it's in black, so dinosaurs are in red uh, for the... I'm, I'm thinking of this as a pirate uh, Grixis colored card. Mm-hmm. So you have uh, vampires in black, you have dinosaurs in red, you have merfolk in blue, so you could just run pirate a pirate colored deck and then... Yeah, absolutely. Have... Now, I, ideally it's four, but you're more likely to get, what, one or two cards back to your hand? Yeah, I still think it's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. I would try to vary my creature types and mm-hmm. pay attention if I pick this up. And yeah. I think I'd probably, like, it's no wander in death. Yeah. And I mean, barring a bomb, if you open a bomb, you're going to take the bomb over this. Oh, yeah. But, I'm not first picking this. But uh, I think this is super fun. Heartless Pillage. Two and a black for a sorcery at Uncommon. Target opponent discards two cards. So that there is Mind Rot. But... Mm. This has raid. If you attacked with a creature this turn, create a treasure. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Mind rot's not particularly playable usually. I don't think this is. I am not any a better. fan. I I know that in the last set there were people who loved their uh, whatever the card was. It was a card. It could cycle or. Target oh yeah. Card. Well, cycling made it better. It mm-hmm. was. Um, I can't remember. It had a guy in a cup on it. And I think the depending on your deck that you're building, the the getting a treasure out of it also might make this a little bit better. Yeah, but maybe. Uh, not my favorite thing. Twenty third for me. I just mm-hmm. like I'll pick it up late. I'd rather play a creature. Yeah. March of the Drowned, single black for a sorcery at common. Choose one. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, or return two target pirate cards from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh. So this one I'm more interested in than the the one that wants many creature types. Mm -hmm. Uh, For a single black mana, that's where I want this kind of effect. And that can be really potent if you can draw two. Mm -hmm. Like, if you can draw two cards for one mana, that seems pretty good. Yeah, I think it's well seated in a pirate deck where you're probably going to be trading off stuff. I will look for these if I have a couple of pirates, Mm -hmm. and um, if I get it on the wheel at the table, I'll know that I'm clear to build the pirate deck. Mm -hmm. I definitely want at least one of these in a black deck. Okay. Mark of the Vampire, another reprint. Three in a black for a nice new art. Yes. For an enchantment aura at common. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and lifelink. Well, there's your lifelink. Yeah. Um, four mana is a lot mm-hmm. for an enchantment, or a creature enchantment. Um, this is only okay. Uh, it saw some play when it was in uh, whatever set it was in, M13, mm-hmm. I think. Um, but it's not a high pick or anything it's like no and i think we're gonna see take it or leave it i think we're definitely it's gonna see some play in limited for sure probably um this is the kind of thing that i would take and put on a flimsy flyer i think this card should also give it the vampire type that would be cool but, especially with that art that's pretty sweet looking yeah. um this is late pack for me i will run one in my deck probably okay especially if i have uh smaller creatures all right Raiders Wake. 
three and a black. Whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. <laughs> and it has... You, you like how it caught you there? Thanks for covering me there. Yeah. With raid, at the beginning of your end step, if you attack with a creature this turn, target opponent discards a card. And this is an enchantment at uncommon. So what do you think of this? I think it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. Ugh. Yeah. Re like, ugh. Really? When is so anyone discarding cards in limited first I think off. The, and when is your opponent discarding cards ever I think the only reason for this is for the raid because when at, at the end if you attacked with a creature they have to discard a card and then they lose two life sure but like it's at four mana and you're <sighs> I'm not saying it's good. <laughs> I mean, I can see this maybe in Commander, where everyone has full hands, and all you need to do is attack with a creature, and they have to pitch something, right? But... That's what this is. Yeah, but in Limited, you're going to have empty hands. And in Standard, a lot of people have empty hands. That's true. Especially at the four of Mark. Yeah, when I... When it starts to get out, yeah. No, I don't like it. Yeah, it's not great. Skullduggery. This that's is a, also a reprint. That's a name. Is it? I think so. I'm fairly certain. Black for an instant at common. Until end of turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and target creature an opponent controls gets minus one, minus one. So, for a single black, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, they're until end of turn. There's no plus one or minus one counters involved. But you could affect, um, you could possibly affect two different combats with mm -hmm. this. Like, you could uh, buff your creature that's going to trade and um, shrink their other creature that's going to trade somewhere else, and suddenly you're winning two combats. That's mm -hmm. the ideal, of course. Mm -hmm. But it it does give. Uh, plus two, plus two, or minus two, minus two, depending on how you look at it, mm -hmm. in combat. The problem is that it's not giving actual plus two to damage, so if you're using it and they're not blocking, you're really not doing much. Um, I think this is going to be a late pack pickup, but mm -hmm. I could be wrong. It's still a pretty good um, combat trick. Yeah. Um. Also, it just it just kills an X one on their side. It's true for one mana, and as we've said, there are fifty of them, or no, uh, thirty of them spread across the colors. So that's true. Um, you did sort of turn me around on what was it? The red card from Hour of Devastation that deals one damage to something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Spreading rot four and a black for a sorcery at common. Destroy target land. Its controller loses two life. No, thank you. Not at five mana. I, I've never been a fan of um, land destruction, and this is not particularly good land destruction. No, you... I mean, I don't like it to begin with. It feels bad. But even if you were going to destroy their land, I don't think there's any special lands that we're going to care that much about. I mean, there are a bunch of special lands, so I could see bringing it in out of the sideboard. Maybe, yeah. But but otherwise, uh, at five mana, they've probably hit a lot of what they want to hit. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think that not interested. there's way better for... Vanquish the Weak. Two and a black for an instant at common. Destroy target creature with power three or less. So, Vanquish the Foul must be power four or greater. Yeah. So this kills those, uh, you know, one sevens and two tens that we're going to no. see later. No, my one seven. Yep. That we saw yesterday. Yep. Um, there's a lot of things with power three or less. Yep. It hits three, so that's most three drops and under. So it's 50 car. No. No, that's toughness. Um, it's a good huge chunk. Yeah, it's a good huge chunk. Um, I think this is going to be a reasonably high pickup for mm -hmm. three mana. It will kill a three drop, 
and it's right in the place in curve where you kind of want it. So mm -hmm. I would be happy to have uh, two yeah, in my deck. I think so too. Walk the plank. Black, black for a sorcery at uncommon. Destroy target non merfolk creature. <laughs> P potentially relevant. Mm -hmm. Non merfolk. I guess um, you could kill one of those sharks that's circling yep. around there. Yep. You, you could maybe kill a giant uh, giant squid, mm -hmm. you know, by making it walk the plank. Any, anyway, um, this is fine. This is um, highly playable. Mm -hmm. Destroy anything that's not a merfolk for black black. Seems good. Mm -hmm. um, where would you pick it up? Not first pick, that's for sure. No? No. I don't think so. It is double black, but I still think I might first pick it. Uh, I don't want to first pick a card that I might have to sideboard out against, you know, a third or okay, that's whatever fair. of the decks, but I still think it's pretty good. Okay. It's two mana to destroy something, so. On to the rares. Ooh. Argwell's Bloodfast. One and a black for a legendary enchantment at rare. You can pay one and a black and two life to draw a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have five or less life, you may transform Argwell's Bloodfast. So how do you feel about paying one and a black and two life to draw a card? Perfectly fine. I think this is going to see some commander play, just yeah. because of that. Yeah. Um, there are enchantments that do this. I think there's one that sits at like four mana, so this was just better. Mm -hmm. But it has a flip side. It transforms into Temple of Aklozots. <laughs> thanks, wizards. Yeah, thanks, wizards. <laughs> uh, you can tap it to add black to your mana pool. And you can tap it and sacrifice a creature to gain life equal to the sacrificed creature's toughness. This is really sweet. Yeah? Yeah, because if you're below five life and you still have a creature on board, you know, you have that whatever, um, this will at least get you back some some life so you draw a bunch of cards until you can't draw cards anymore and if you're not winning the game at that point then maybe this transforms and you start gaining some life back yeah yeah i'm in would Seems you first pick it yeah probably yeah me too is it rare right yes yeah then i would first pick it boneyard parlay <laughs> five black black for a sorcery at mythic Exile up to five target creature cards from graveyards. <laughs> At, uh, an opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put all cards from the pile of your choice onto the battlefield under your control and the rest into their owner's graveyards. I think this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting look at a, um, a factor fiction yeah. effect uh, or a, a Gifson given effect, mm -hmm. you know? Um, exile up to five. So, at seven mana, you might actually get the whole five. You're still only going to get two to three of those into play. Mm -hmm. So, how happy are you with two or three random two or three drops for seven mana? Still pretty happy? I'm pretty okay with that, especially since they could be something fun from your graveyard, from your opponent's graveyard. Hmm. Okay. You're going to get whatever one thing you want. Yeah. Right? Because your opponent does the separating and then you get to choose. Yeah. So, yeah. And you might get whatever good thing they had that you managed to kill. Mm-hmm. The problem is that whatever you're getting has to have been killed, so it's not like it's invulnerable. Yeah, yeah. I but still think this is probably a first pick. I would like to try it. Yeah, it's kind of neat. I really like the flavor of the whole thing. I like the use of the word parlay. Yeah. It's a very piratey feeling thing, so. Revel in Riches. Four in a black for an enchantment at rare. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, create a treasure. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control ten or more treasures, you win the game. 
Oh, so this is the new Second Son type card. Effect. It's a lot like mechanized production. I am so first picking this and Are you? going all in treasure. Anything that makes a treasure? Yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. All right. This looks like fun. I mean, the ideal is to just ignore the first part and then have ten treasures somehow. By the time you hit five? Well, not by the time you hit five, but before you drop this, absolutely. Well, I mean, and just... even just with that uh, common five mana destroyer creature, you get two. Yeah? <laughs> so I don't think it's asking a lot. How good do you think it is? Ah. Uh... Um, See, I don't, it literally does nothing for five mana. I don't think it is great, but I do think it could be a um, a win condition. Okay. I'm going to take the stance that this is unplayably bad, and though it will win a couple of games, it's never going to be the right play. But I'm probably going to try it anyway. Oh, I totally want to try it. It seems like fun. It's bad, folks. Just, just know Try that it. it's going to be you're amazing. getting into, you're getting in over your head. It's amazing. Sword point diplomacy. Let's see if we agree on this one. This is uh, Lyra's spoiler card. Have you seen their spoiler video? Yet? I have not. Uh, two and a black for a sorcery at rare. Reveal the top three cards of your library. For each of those cards, put that card into your hand unless any opponent pays three life. Then exile the rest. Oh, so this is definitely for Commander. Uh, well, sure. <laughs> um, Multiplayer. I think it's great in Limited. It's oh, yeah. It's a three-mana draw three. Yeah. Or it's a three-mana draw uh, deal nine to your opponent. Yep. Or three or six or whatever. Now, they get to choose for each card, so that's kind of weird. You reveal the, the cards and be like... Do you want to give me this removal spell? No, you're going to pay three life? Okay, this goes in away. Do you want to give me this land? Yes? Okay, I, I have a land. Yay. What about this creature? Okay, you don't want me to have the creature? You pay six life and I get a land. It's still um, thinning out your deck three cards and uh, possibly it's... giving get, getting into them for three mana. Yep, yeah. I, I, I like it. I do too. I think it's... Better than Yon Lava Axe. Yeah. <laughs> Vraska's Contempt. Ooh. Two black black for an instant at rare. Exile target creature or planeswalker. You gain two life. Here's the removal I want. How many do you want? All of them. Hm. Uh, two? Yeah. At, at rare? Sure. Two's great. Sure. Uh, yeah, first pick. It's absolutely fine. It's, this is uh, this is what Heroes Downfall is right now. A, one extra mana. It's like Hour of, what was it? Not Promise. Eternity. The no, the black one. Mm. Hey, she turned him into stone. I just noticed that. Yeah, That's she really did. cool. Yeah, look through the art. You'll see a bunch of um, body parts, stone body parts being used. <laughs> That's awesome. And that's it for black. So what do we think of black? Black's fun. There's some really interesting things in there. I I think I liked the build arounds mm -hmm. in black, even though I think they're bad. I think they're better than the whites. Yeah. At absolutely. least for me. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to uh, red. So our first red card is really an old workhorse. <laughs> Demolish. Three and a red for a sorcery at common, destroy, target, artifact, or land. You know, last time we did a set review with Demolish, I think I said I've never seen anyone play Demolish. Mm -hmm. um, I've finally seen someone play Demolish. Okay. It, it uh, has been played in mm -hmm. a game, but I still don't like it. It's a sideboard card for me, and if you yeah. need to get rid of an artifact or... I you better land. really need to get rid of that <laughs> artifact, though. Like, four mana. But if this is all there is, which we don't know yet, um, if you need it, it's fine. You're always going to be able to find one. Yeah. Yeah, these will be wheeling around the table, no problem. Mm -hmm. 
Next. Ooh. Dinosaur <laughs> Stampede. Burr, burr, burr. Two and a red for an instant at uncommon. Attacking creatures get plus two plus oh until end of turn. Dinosaurs you control gain trample until end of turn. Oh, yes. Yep. So oh, this yes. is instant speed. It's a trumpet blast. It'll help you punch through for lethal. Um, if you put it in a dinosaur deck, it'll really actually help you punch through. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to be trading a bunch of creatures. Yeah, it's a it's a red anthem that can possibly trample, which mm -hmm. I rather like. So, where do you pick it? Um, How many dinosaurs do you want before it's actually good? I'm probably going to take it second or third pick, <laughs> and then grab all of the dinosaurs. Okay. The only problem with it is that trumpet blasts tend to like aggressive decks, mm -hmm. and dinosaurs tend to be huge. Well, there's so, some. There's a lot of smaller ones in red. Okay. So it's well. That's fair. Seated. We did notice that the the deck, the red white dino deck, does seem to be still aggressive. Mm -hmm. All right. Dual shot, a single red for an instant at common. Dual shot deals one damage to each of up to two target creatures. So this is a shock variant, I guess. It it splits up the shock. Mm hmm. Um. I, I was going to rate this fairly low, and then we actually looked at the toughnesses, and mm -hmm. with all the X1s and tokens running around, I think this is actually going to be pretty good. I'll pick them up, and I would even put two in my deck. Yeah, I think this is going to be, for me, like a, you know, fifth or sixth pick, because yeah. you can take out two, possibly two creatures, with one mana kill spell. I imagine that's where we'll see it being picked you won't see it later than that but yeah. you might not want to pick it any higher so yeah mm. fiery cannonade wow that's a weird word two and a red for an instant add uncommon fiery cannonade deals two damage to each non-pirate creature this also goes in my pirate deck huh that's something huh two damage to each non-pirate creature so it's not going to kill any dinosaurs Nope. It'll kill merfolk. It'll kill vampires, as it's doing in the art. So, yeah. Um, but it will kill some dinosaurs, because we've just finished discussing that there are a bunch of smaller ones. Mm -hmm. It's not going to kill the big guys. But it's it can okay. also finish stuff off. Yeah. I don't think it's as well placed. Well, I don't know. Man, that's tough, because usually spells like this are really good, right? Mm-hmm. And I guess if you're if you're wiping your opponent's board, if you have a bunch of pirates, that would be real good, right? Mm -hmm. So, where do you pick this up? Um, hopefully my first pick is a diamond is a uh, pirate based card, mm -hmm. and then I pick this second because then I know I'm going into pirates. And you think it'll go that high? I that don't know. you're not going to see it third or fourth? Maybe. I don't know. It's uh, It depends when it comes across my table. Yeah. I can see people picking it highly because it can be a bit of a board wipe. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I think this is one of those things that we're going to have to come back and look at later. Instant speed. It can deal the damage to take out bigger things after they've locked. Yeah. This can wipe the board of things that didn't quite get killed. Yeah. I think it could be kind of tricky. I might have to pick this up real early. And then make sure that all of my creatures are pirates. Mm -hmm. All right, high pick. Fire cannon blast, one red red for a sorcery at common. Fire cannon blast deals three damage to target creature. There's a raid. Fire and ca fire cannon blast deals six damage to that creature instead if you attacked with a creature this turn. Ooh. Okay. So, uh, three mana, three damage that's basically um oh what was it open fire yep. right um now it's double red but and it's at sorcery was open fire open fire was an instant yeah oh and it could also go to the face hmm this is Want still more. this is still okay i think this is still okay yeah three mana deal three dip excuse me three damage to a creature the problem is that it is sorcery speed so if there's something that you need to deal six to, your raid creature is probably going to die. <laughs> yeah. Unless you've got a flyer. 
Yeah. So keep that in mind. Um, of course, they also may think you're up to something and won't block. And then you kind of go, ha ha. Not only was I not up to something, but I'm also up to something. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. This is probably not a high pick. There's probably better. Yeah. Uh, red removal. I mean, we know there is. We, we, we're we going to be talking about it in a second. But, um, I don't know. It It's a curve filler, I guess, or a, yeah. a deck filler. Mm-hmm. This is filler. Hijack. Huh, another One. reprint. <laughs> One red red for a sorcery at common. Gain control of target artifact or creature until end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste until end of turn. So, this was actually better than it looked in, um, what was it, Kaladesh? How do you think it's going to be here? Well, I don't know. I I love the idea of these cards. I think they are super, super fun. Um, I love the idea of stealing your 9-9 and smashing you in the face with it. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be f- fine. For me, these are always sideboard cards. I'll sideboard them in if I have a feeling that games are going to go um, back and forth and my opponent's going to leave, you know, a creature back to keep from dying and then I can just, Mm -hmm. you know, scoop it out of the way. Sure. But um, I don't tend to main deck these and I don't take them very highly. No, neither do I. Lightning Strike. Here it is. One and a red for an instant at Uncommon. Lightning Strike deals three damage to target creature or player. Well. Yeah, this is right up there for me. Yep. I imagine I'm going to first pick more than one of these. Yep. Um, pr- probably not every time, but it's definitely going to go highly. Mm-hmm. It's a if you premium s- removal. If you see it mid-pack, jump because red's open. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of many things that should go above this if if it's going like middle of the pack mm-hmm. if it's passed by four people it's definitely a signal mm-hmm. makeshift munitions one and a red for an enchantment at uncommon pay one colorless sacrifice an artifact or creature makeshift munitions deals one damage to target creature or player hmm what do you think about this one um, it's interesting. It's kind of like, what is it, Goblin Bombardment or whatever? The, um, sack a creature to deal one damage is a thing that we've seen in Red before. Mm-hmm. Having the ability to sacrifice the treasure seems pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I would want to make a bunch of treasure and then use them on this. I'd be happy with that. Yeah. It's a build around. Mm-hmm. Um... It's something that could give you reach in an aggressive deck. Yeah. But, um, I don't know, you're you're not going to run it in every deck. No. So, where would you pick it up? Would you pick it up when you're already red aggressive as a sort of finisher? Or would you more, more make it a control finisher with a bunch of treasure? I don't think I would put this necessarily in a red aggro deck. No? Because I don't know... I don't know. Maybe. It's when your one ones stop getting in, then... You can just fling them at their faces. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'd probably pick this third or fourth and try it out. That high? Yeah. I will know once we've tried it once what it's going to do. I do like the fact that they are uh, stuffing somebody who's been turned to stone's head into the <laughs> uh, cannon. And the funny yeah, looking probably. little goblin is... Uh, the monkey goblins? Yeah. they're oh, I love goblins. Yep, they're is, so whimsical. This is basically a goblin card. Yeah. All right. Ryle for a single red sorcery at common. Ryle deals one damage to target creature you control. That creature gains trample until end of turn. Draw a card. See? Wow, that is weird. So here is the other part of my three-card combo that I want to build a deck out of with the um, the uncommon little dragon that whenever it takes damage, it uh-huh. makes a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. And the enchantment that goes on it and gives it plus two, plus two. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I live in the dream. Yeah. It's a cantrip. Um, as for the actual viability of this card in any sort of format, eh? it's weird, right? Like it gives something trample. You'd ha- you better have something pretty big. 
yeah. that's going to kill your opponent. Or <sighs> you'd get to draw a card. Yeah, I don't it's think so I'd play It's so weird. This. You don't think you'd play it? No. I think I'd play one. It's Home is in a red-green deck, I think. I think so, too. A big, dumb dino deck. Mm-hmm. So I would pick it up if I needed another playable in that deck, but mm-hmm. not highly. Is that a, a beetle sitting it's on the side? Some sort of shock beetle, yeah. Interesting. That's cute. And I think that's telling you right there what the point of this card is. Yeah. It's to do a shock to a great big dinosaur where it's not going to matter. Yeah. That's cute. Sure Strike. One and a red for an instant at common. Target creature gets plus three plus oh and gains first strike until end of turn. Hmm. It's another reprint. I've never liked this card, um, but I've had it used against me to good effect lots. Mm-hmm. So take from that what you will. Um, where where do you pick things like this up? Later in the pack. Yeah. Yeah. You um, let them wheel around and. Yeah, I would probably take one. Yeah. If there's nothing in the pack for me in my colors, I will probably grab one of these, and I'll pro- it'll probably end up in the deck. Pick it up whenever. Yeah. Swashbuckling. One and a red for an enchantment aura at common. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has plus two, plus two, and haste. Okay. Um, what do you need to give haste that uh, you're going to spend two mana on a creature enchantment that turn to give it haste. Mm, who knows? So this is basically just plus two, plus two. Yeah. For two. Mm-hmm. I'd prefer to have a bear. I'd prefer the two-two body. Mm, fair enough. Uh, I'm probably not going to play this. No, but yeah. you would play the thing that we just saw that that for, a, you know, one turn gives something. Plus three plus, or plus three plus oh on first strike. Granted, it's more of a combat trick, yeah. but... Uh... That's just it. I can use it to good effect. This leaves me open to all manner of shenanigans. Yeah, it also two for ones you when they kill your creature. Mm -hmm. Trove of Temptation. Three and a red for an enchantment at uncommon. Each opponent must attack you or a planeswalker you control with at least one creature each combat if able. At the beginning of your end step, create a colorless treasure artifact token. Okay. Each opponent must attack you. Well, if they don't want to attack you, then uh, this is probably pretty good. And if they were attacking you anyway, then that doesn't do anything. So the question is, do you want to spend four mana to make treasures? Meh. Meh? Meh. Meh. Um, When could you see playing this? In one of those decks where we're wanting to... Make a bunch of treasures? Yeah. So you're going to know if you want it. Otherwise, it's I'm just probably passing just it. unplayable. Yep. yep. Unfriendly Fire. This is also a reprint, isn't it? Mm, I'm not sure. Four and a red. For an instant at common, Unfriendly Fire deals four damage to target creature or player. All right. So five mana, four damage, but it's at instant speed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. This is probably fine. It's one more than Electrify, one uh, colorless mana more, but still probably playable. Yep. It's no Lightning Strike, but... uh, Still four damage. I'll still grab a couple for my deck if I can find them. Mm -hmm. They'll probably go higher than I can pick them. Mm -hmm. All right, our first rare, Repeating Barrage. One red red for a sorcery at rare. Repeating Barrage deals three damage to target creature or player. The raid on it, there is a raid, three red red, return repeating barrage from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only if you've attacked with a creature this turn. So this is pretty sweet, I think. It goes in a long game red deck, Mm -hmm. which is strange to say, but uh, three damage for three mana, we've already seen that card. Mm -hmm. Um, in, In fact, in a lot of ways, this looks just like the rare... Of exactly that card. <laughs> right? Um, but being able to return a burn spell from your graveyard to your hand is pretty sweet. So you think this will sit well in the green-red kind of dinosaur deck? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it'll go well in the red-white deck if you have any flyers at all. You just do this mm-hmm. all day. Mm-hmm. Um and just three damage for three mana is fine, even if you don't get to repeat it ever. Yep. 
So. Seems good. Star of Extinction. Five red red for a sor sorcery at mythic. Destroy target land. Star of Extinction deals 20 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Wow, that's excessive. <laughs> wow. They are not <laughs> messing around. It. Boom, 20 to each creature and each planeswalker. 20 damage means something, but it's not coming at you unless um, you combo it with something not in this set. So. Whoa. It's a board wipe, for sure. Yowza. Yep. It's... And you can destroy their land if that makes any difference. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would assume you'd be destroying their land. Five, six, seven. Seven mana. Seven mana board wipe? I don't know. I don't want to play it. I don't want to play it either. If this turns out to be a grindy... Um, format, then I will probably play it and laugh it's kind when of I a cast Hail Mary. it. Um, but yeah, it is so super flavorful, though. Yeah, like that's amazing. I'm glad this card exists. But I'm yeah. super glad ex it exists. I'm just gonna leave it on the table. Let somebody else have it. Yeah. <laughs> Sunbird's Invocation, five and a red for an enchantment at rare. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards of your library, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You may cast a card revealed this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Huh. Shall we unpack that? Yeah, okay. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, you get to reveal its converted mana costs worth of cards so let's say you cast a four drop uh -huh. you reveal four cards yep and if you have anything f that costs four or less you can cast it without paying its mana cost and the rest goes on the bottom of your library weird so it drops on six, so uh -huh. that means the next turn you cast your seven drop. Sure. Let's just <laughs> say we, we cast our six drop. Sure, fair enough. Although, I mean, if you do, if you're going dinos or whatever, we've seen a ton of stuff at seven and eight mana yeah. in this set. So, yeah. I mean, you and could call also, it a build around. And don't forget, there's also possibly you're going to maybe, like clues were end up incidentally with three or four pieces of treasure sitting on your thing and suddenly you're casting this six drop enchantment for three mana are we gonna call it a build around um yeah i think i think it's really powerful oh it's definitely powerful but it is is it good i think it's playable yeah i think you need to i think you need to build around it yeah which means picking it highly yeah I would like to try it. it. Okay. I think it will be fun. All right. This I uh, has potential. There's a lot of weird build. Like I said, this is full of weird shenanigans. Yeah. Vance's Blasting Cannons. Three and a red for a legendary enchantment at rare. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. If it's an online card, you may cast that card this turn. Whenever you cast your third spell in a turn, you may transform Vance's Blasting Cannons. Alright, so let's look at the, the front side first. Four mana. Cast a spell for free half the time? Uh, it's not for free. You still have to pay for it. Oh. It's not without oh, paying you, its mana cost. Okay, so. You just get an extra card. So you the cast beginning of your upkeep, you yeah get a card. You draw a card, basically. You that draw you a have card to cast this. Yeah, turn. and then you get your regular draw. So you essentially get an extra card that turn. Okay. Whenever you cast your third spell in a turn, you transform it. So how likely is it going to get transformed? Fairly likely in red. Yeah. Yeah. You think you can cast three things in a turn? Probably. Okay. All right. Um, I think you have to do some work. To make that happen, I don't usually cast more than two spells a turn, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know. Um, I, I I think right 
now it's sitting at sort of a build around. All right, let's see what me. it does. Why would you want to transform it? Spitfire Bastion, a legendary land that taps to add red to your mana pool, or you can tap two and a red and tap it to have it deal three damage to tar target creature or player. Now wow. there is a reason to build around. That is a reason to build around. I'm so, uh, going to be playing some one drops in this uh, in this deck. Let if, me tell you. Yeah, yeah. If there's a red spells deck, um, this is a pretty good piece for it. So, yeah, I'm going to say this is probably a build around. Mm -hmm. Okay. How good is it? <laughs> the ability to pay three mana and do three damage to target creature or player over and over and over. I think that's pretty good. So you want to get it transformed, absolutely. Oh, yeah. But And you think it's going to be fairly easy to do that? Um, if you run a couple of... Well, I don't know. Depends what you're running, right? It's hmm. in red. There are some decent one drops. There are a lot of really good two and three drops. Okay. I want to make it work. So it's a first pick, obviously. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think this is a... I'm going to grab it every time I see it. I think it's a, I want to grab it, see it, try it out. But I think it could be good. Okay. All right. And that's it for red. So what did we think of red? It was spicy. Spicy. Lots it's of aggressive. removal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's lots of... There were quite a few build-arounds, and most of them having to do with blasting your opponent's face. As it should be. It's red. All right. Well, we will be uh, right back with green. All right, starting us off in green with Blinding Fog. Two and a green for an instant at common. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to creatures this turn. Creatures you control gain hexproof until the end of turn. So it's basically a marginally better fog. Um, okay, so fog is single green. This is yeah. two and a green. And this also doesn't stop them from doing damage to you. No, uh two creatures yeah yeah that's true i think it's i wouldn't run it as a fog i'd be running it for the hex proof fair enough i think you board this in you board this in against a um a board wipe basically against star of extinction yeah or <laughs> removal dot deck yeah fair enough um it only works once but mm -hmm. If you have it on the turn you need it, that seems pretty good. Mm -hmm. I just don't ever see putting it in my main deck. Never. And no. I'm not going to pick it high. It's no. going to be a last pick kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Commune with Dinosaurs. Green for a sorcery at common. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a dinosaur or land from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So you can hit a land. That's kind of cool, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, uh, reveal a dinosaur or land. So there's no downside. It's not like you have to put them into your graveyard. It's a single green mana. I think maybe I play this. Mm -hmm. I think I maybe make this uh, my turn one play and just go digging. Fair enough. What do you think? Uh, I've never been a fan of this kind of effect. The, you know, look at the top four or five, and if there is, then do this. Um, it seems okay, I guess. The fact that it gives you a dinosaur or more likely a land yeah, um, helps it, in my estimation. It makes hands that are um, marginal more keepable. Sure, you know? sure. So, And you're assuming that you're going to be running dinos in green. Yeah. Okay. And I'm only going to play... Well, I might play two, but I'm only going to be looking to play one of these. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, I think something has gone wrong if I've got two of them in my deck, but I think I'd be happy with one on turn one. Fair enough. Crash the Ramparts. Two and a green for an instant at common. Target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Yep. Sign me up. Yeah? Yeah. Even at three? Yeah, it's fine. All right. Um, it's a little pricey, but it's a decent combat trick because of the trample. Sure, the trample makes it. It's a little too pricey for me. I'm not a big fan. I'll probably... It's a 23rd, 24th kind of thing for me. Mm. I prefer more creatures. 
I think I want it more than you do. Okay. Um, the thing that frustrates me in green is it's great to have all these great big things, but if they're just chump blocking, you never get through. Right. So the tramples, sweet. Fair enough. Crushing Canopy is two and a green for an instant at common. Choose one. Destroy target creature with flying or destroy target enchantment. So cool. these are two sideboard cards slammed together. Yeah, I want one of these in my sideboard. I might even think about main decking one. Yeah, you'd probably make use of it. I mean, I, I'm playing them in sealed for sure. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. people play their flyers. Um, uh, it's probably not main deck in, uh, in draft, but I'd be happy to pick one up mm -hmm. for the sideboard. Yeah. It seems like a, a strong sideboard card. Mm hmm because it, it does, you know, multiple things. Mm -hmm. Emergent Growth. Three and a green for a sorcery at Uncommon. Target creature gets plus five, plus five until end of turn and must be blocked this turn of Fable. So, it's funny. I like this one more than the one that gives plus three, plus three and trample. Well, I look at this completely different. To me, this is a removal spell. This is almost like a fight spell, right? Yeah, that's how I would view this as well. So okay. I would definitely take it if I'm in green and run it. Now, it must be blocked. It can be chump blocked, but mm -hmm. they could also throw everything in front of it and trade. Sure, so, but they're going to lose some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would take the first one fairly highly. I just really think plus five is a lot mm -hmm. and the fact that it could act as a removal spell i like to i mean that's the only thing that it's going to do is work as removal because you're not getting through with this because they're blocking right so yeah I unless think they don't have any creatures uh fair enough then you're just smashing face <laughs> horrendously in, in, in the limited game where you're already winning because your opponent doesn't have any creatures yeah putting the oh yeah that's no. yucky new horizons two and a green for enchantment aura at common enchant land when new horizons enters the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control but the enchanted land has tap to add two mana of any one color to your mana pool Hmm. I am going to take every single one of these I see in one single draft and then draft five colors because I've become a five color addict. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> the card that's going to let you do that. And it is a co at common, so... At three mana, it's like... Well, it's basically a, um, a manolith. It's a splash you know? enabler, yeah. But... Um, Putting the plus one counter on a creature you control seems Yeah, cool. yeah, this is surprisingly okay. Where would you pick this? You wouldn't. <laughs> no, I would. I would, okay. but not early. Not early? I want to know that I'm in green, because, again, it takes me a while to decide that I'm going into green. And other colors? And other, co and other colors, yeah. This yeah. would make me more likely to go into green, though. Okay. All right. Pounce! <laughs> one and a green for an instant at common... Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control, and that means they each deal their damage or their power in damage to each other. So, we've seen this effect before. I don't think we've ever seen it this cheaply. Um. Well, because it usually also has your target, your creature gets plus one plus one. It or, does damage. Or when a creature dies, you gain two life or whatever. Yeah, so this so is this just is a just straight a up, fight. you're either trading your creatures or you have to have something bigger to win the combat. But you are in green, so your creatures are going to naturally be bigger. You hope so. So, yeah, I think it's fine. I'm going to want one or two. We've seen just the, um, the fight mechanic at three mana, I think, before, mm -hmm. and it was not great. But at two, I think it's well situated. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a good card. River Herald's Boon. One and a green for an instant at common. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and a plus one plus one counter on up to one target merfolk. Um, so you can still put the plus one counter on a merfolk and then 
another one on another merfolk. Mm -hmm. That doesn't exclude no. merfolk. But uh, if you, you don't have a merfolk, you still get one plus one counter. Just the one plus one counter. So I'm gonna say you want to have a merfolk for this. Mm -hmm, for sure. And you probably want to have um, two creatures. Although if you do have a merfolk, you could just put two plus one counters on that merfolk. Yep, and it is at instant. It's true. It seems pretty good. And it does have an adorable frog on the card. It does. <laughs> um, what do you think? I think it's fine. I think it's a combat trick, or... I think this is the kind of combat trick I like. Yeah. It's a combat trick that gives you some sort of value... That sticks around. That sticks around. Yeah. And uh, it has modes, mm -hmm. so I like it. I, I do want to have Merfolk before I pick it up, though. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Savage Stomp. Two and a green for a sorcery at Uncommon. Savage Stomp costs two less to cast if it targets a dinosaur you control. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature fights target creature you don't control. So I really wow. want to have a dinosaur uh, for this. For one green? Green yeah. fight? And a counter? Oh. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Sounds sick. Yeah. Uh, it is sorcery speed, which is fine. Fights usually are. Yep. Uh, and even at three mana, I think, put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature and then it fights is fine. Mm -hmm. So this, this is, is going to be a high pick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not as good as, like, Ambuscade, which is a one-sided fight. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, approaching um, Cartouche of, what is it, strength mm -hmm. level. It's not quite that good, but it is a mana cheaper, I think. Wasn't that four mana? No, that was three. It was three? Three or two. All right, so it's not quite as good at that, as that, but it's still pretty good. So I imagine picking these up before the wheel and, mm -hmm. you know. For sure. If I see them later, it's going to be a sign to me that I should maybe think about getting some green dinos. Mm-hmm. Slice in twain! Two green green for an instant at Uncommon. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Draw a card. Uh, this is still sideboard. Absolutely. It It's pretty good. I like drawing a card off of a good sideboard card. Sure. But uh, just drawing a card for four mana isn't good enough. So. Yeah, no. Sideboard, and I'll probably pick it up fairly late, too. Ditto. Verdant Rebirth. One in a green for an instant at Uncommon. Until end of turn, target creature gains when this creature dies... Return it to its owner's hand and draw a card. So, this is kind of a combat trick. It it saves your creature, sort of. So, if you know your creature's going to die, it bounces it to your hand. Yeah. And you get to draw a card. Yeah. Uh, so, it's kind of, when you know you're trading creatures, you get to draw two cards. Sort yeah. of. Um... I don't think it's going to be a high pick, but I can see putting one in my deck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think it's great, though. No. No? You know, it's better in a deck that has some death touch. Where you know your creature's <laughs> going to die. That's yeah. what it's for. Yeah. We'll see. So, we're on to the rares now. And we start with Growing Rites of Itlamok. Two and a green for a legendary enchantment at rare. When Growing Rites of Itlamok enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. At the beginning of your end step, if you control four or more creatures, transform Growing Rites of Itlamok. So, this is another one of those... Um, kind of scry a bunch and draw a creature. Mm -hmm. uh, you've already said you don't really like those? Yeah. yeah. Um, I I kind of do like them when there's not a lot of downside. If it's not going into my graveyard, I will definitely play them. It's the ones that, are, that you saw in Theros, I think. So you, you're just losing... Um, Everything else that isn't a creature... Yeah, that doesn't really affect anything. 
Well, it it's does just when it, when it whiffs that it feels real bad. It feels real bad to me when I drop my only removal into the bin or my good removal into the bin for a, you know, 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. <laughs> but if it goes, again, if it goes on the bottom of your library, I'm less likely to not play it. Okay. Um, well, it transforms into Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. So we've talked about this on the podcast before, but uh, it's a legendary land. You can tap it to add green to your mana pool, or you can tap it to add green to your mana pool for each creature you control. Interesting. So you're already going to have four creatures. creatures. So mm -hmm. tap it to add four green to your mana pool. Mm-hmm. So it'll ramp you right up there to your big stuff. Yeah, this this one I'm I'm okay with. So you get the effect when it enters the battlefield. The um the kind of grab a creature. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wanna fill my deck with creatures and I'm going to absolutely first pick this mm -hmm. and then build around it in the Gaia's cradle kind of way. Because that's mm -hmm. this what this card is, Gaia's Cradle. Yeah. Um, it's not as good because you can't just drop it on uh, as your land and then start ramping every turn. Sure, but it also but doesn't it'll... cost a gajillion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so, first pick, build around, I'm going to say. Yeah. Shaper's Sanctuary. Green for an enchantment at rare. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. That's really interesting. It's, yeah. Um, how many cards do you have to draw off of this before you think it's good? I probably want two cards for one mana. Okay. But um, I'm looking at the other side of it, the de-incentivizing them killing your creatures although they probably won't but you're drawing cards yeah i don't know i don't know that it's good but it's interesting i think it's kind of a win more like if i could be guaranteed to have it on the battlefield on turn one i'd play it all day mm -hmm. <laughs> but the problem is top decking this on turn 10 <laughs> you know um i don't know I'd sideboard it in against the all the removal deck. Yeah, I would prefer this card if it said whenever a creature you control dies. Because then you have a little more control and it means that it's not just... Oh, that would be busted. Yeah, because how many, how many pieces of um, targeted removal is, one of, is your opponent going to play? Well, I'd side it in against anything that tapped creatures down. Sure, like, sure. They're never going to tap your creature down if you're going to draw a card every time they do it. Oh, right? yeah. So I I can see this seeing sideboard play in Constructed. Mm -hmm. And if it comes around late in a pack, I'll pick it up and think about, you know, ways to side it in. Mm -hmm. But I'm not main decking this card. No. no. And that's it for green. So what do we think of green? It's pretty good. There's it seems some really very, interesting stuff. It seems very green. <laughs> <laughs> seems very green. I agree. All right. So there's a bunch of artifacts and just a few lands, and then we'll be done. So we get to start off the artifacts with an old favorite. Mm -hmm. Cobbled Wings is two mana for an artifact equipment at common. Equipped creature has flying, and it equips for one. Uh, I've played these before. I haven't played them since I've been good at magic, but I think I'll play one in this set. I will too. <laughs> I want my dinosaurs to fly. <laughs> you, you want flying dinosaurs? I do. Can you imagine a, uh, a what was it, the Regisar Alpha with cobbled wings? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a terrifying prospect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to pick this highly, but I will pick it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a common, so you'll be able to get one probably. Yeah, yeah. I don't imagine people will be picking these too highly, but mm -hmm. I will play one in my deck. Yep, for sure. Um, giving your best creature evasion seems good. Mm -hmm. for. And the equip cost is one. Yeah. So you pay out your two to start, and then it's one. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Uh, the re-equip is really easy on these. So. Yeah, I mean, I played Mighty Leap, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. 
All right, next we have Elaborate Fire Cannon. Two mana for an artifact at Uncommon. It doesn't untap during your untap step. Okay, you can pay for and tap it to have it deal two damage to target creature or player. Okay, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may discard a card. If you do, untap Elaborate Fire Cannon. Huh. Hmm. So what do we think? You can pay... Six mana to deal two damage to a creature or a player. And then you have to start discarding cards to it. Yeah. Meh. Uh, yeah. Unless you have another way to untap it. Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> maybe make a combo deck with... Um, I don't even remember, but... Um, a five. Four mana four, is a yeah, lot. Yeah, four mana is a lot for two damage. So... Man, what if it were three and three? Maybe. I mean, what if it were four and then two and tap it? Four to cost, cast and then two and tap it. I don't think there's any combination of mana no. that makes this playable. I don't like it. I don't like it either. It, I, no. It's flavorful, but... Yeah, yeah, but... No. No. I'll pass. Hierophant's Chalice. Three mana for an artifact... When it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. And then you can tap it to add colorless to your mana pool. So it's a mana rock. It's a three mana mana rock. It doesn't fix you, but it does drain your opponent. I think there are just better ways to ramp in this I format. I think so too, yeah. With the, these mana rocks, if you're not fixing, they're not exactly worth it anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you if you want to get to 7 or 8 mana, sure, maybe. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to take a pass But it's that common, one. and I think you'll know if it's something that will be beneficial. Most of the time, it's just not. Yeah, I'm going to pass. Mm -hmm. Pillar of Origins. Ooh. 2 mana for an artifact at uncommon. As Pillar of Origins enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Then you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool, but you can spend that mana only to cast creatures of the chosen type. So this is a two mana rock, but it's specific to whatever your tribe is. How heavy do you want to be in your tribe before you play this? Mm, I don't know. I think I'm only playing this in dinosaurs. Yeah? And then I'd pick as many of them up as I want. Sure. Because I'll pick up all of the like expensive dinos in this. Sure. Time. Um... On the other hand, in Constructed, I can see it working, but I think I'm only playing this if I have heavy dinosaurs. Yeah, you've got to be heavy something. I mean, it is kind of color fixing. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a lot of one type of creature, mm -hmm. and if you want to take a turn off on to play two it. To yeah. play it. Yeah. So that's why I say dinos are probably the key there. Yeah. Pirate's Cutlass. Three mana for an artifact equipment at common. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to target pirate you control. Hey, so you get a free equip. It gives them plus two, plus one. That's fine. If you're running pirates... <coughs> excuse me. Oh, and it equips for two. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're running pirates, I like it. I like uh, being able to get the free equip. Mm -hmm. um, it's at that point. It's like a creature enchantment that doesn't get two for one mm -hmm. because then you can just re-equip it. Mm -hmm. um, so I will look for this if I have six or seven pirates. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I'm not really that interested. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, for rules purposes, if you do not have a pirate, it just acts like a regular artifact. It just enters the battlefield and sits there. Yep. Prying Blade is a one mana artifact equipment at common. Equipped creature gets plus one plus oh. Okay. It equips for two. Alright. And whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you get a treasure. Mm. So I have played the one mana plus one plus oh. Uh, well, I think it was plus one plus one. Um, artifact before and been eh, like fine with it um, I think this depends entirely on how much you want the treasures mm -hmm. and we've seen there are some things that really want treasures so 
if you can put this on an evasive creature. On a flyer, yeah. yeah. Uh, as of the beginning of the set, I'm out. I'm not interested. In it's a common, so if I think that I'm going one. to be running the quote-unquote treasure deck. Yeah. Yeah. Sentinel Tome is a one-mana artifact at Uncommon. When Sentinel Tome enters the battlefield, scry one. And then you can tap it and exile Sentinel Tome to exile all cards from all graveyards. Not interested. No, I think this is sideboard and constructed yeah. to hose the um, current embalmy kind of graveyardy things. Yeah, I think they're actually gearing this toward like eternal formats, things where graveyards really matter. Oh yeah. Uh, but And for one mana and a tap, yeah. It yeah. seems good there. Yep. Um, but as for limited, no. Yeah. All right, we're on to the lands now. Field of Ruin is a land at Uncommon. It taps to add colorless to your mana pool, or you can tap two and tap it, so that's a total of three lands, and sacrifice Field of Ruins to destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. Then each player searches their library for a basic, puts it onto the battlefield, and shuffles their library. So that it does quite a bit, though. Mm -hmm. There, you get a land for sacking it. Mm -hmm. So you're paying two mana and trading them non-basics for basics. Yep. I don't see anything in... Um, in construct or in uh, limited that I would play this for. I yeah. might side it in against one of those um, transform lands, but... Mm -hmm. And the thing is... Uh, some of the opponent controls. So, if you cannot... Just, if they don't have a non-basic land, you can't go searching for a basic land. So... Uh, you can. There's a period. There are two separate clauses. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. But you're sacking a land, so you're giving them an extra land. Mm -hmm. You're both you're uh, down on a land in that transaction, unless mm -hmm. you can destroy something. I would side this in against the um, um, what's it called, Gaia's Cradle thing. One of those fancy fancy side... lands, yeah. Yeah, but otherwise, not really interested. Nope. Unclaimed territory. Uh, this is a land at Uncommon. As Unclaimed Territory enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. So, this is one of those cards that you could choose, you know, soldiers or humans. Mm -hmm. But you're more likely to choose pirates or merfolk or something. Mm -hmm. You can tap to add colorless to your mana pool, or you can tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. So... If you want this, you're going to know. You're going to have, you know, ten of the tribal creature type. Mm -hmm. I like this better than the artifact. Yeah. did the similar thing, yeah. Because bottom line is, if nothing else, it's a colorless land source. And if you're running just this one in your, you know, 17 land deck, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we're going to be on 18 land decks in this format. I don't know. Unknown Shores. Well, this oh, is definitely good old unknown shores. So you can tap it to add colorless to your mana pool, or you can tap one and tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So it adds one to the cost of anything that you want to cast if you're splashing it or trying to fix Splash for enabler. it. Splash Enabler. Good to see it, though. Yeah, um, it's fine. It's not exciting. It's not something that goes in every deck, and the card that you're going to splash off of it, you really want to ask yourself whether it's good if you have to pay one more mana for it, you know? Mm -hmm. But, uh... So this is for one of those three-color legendary creatures or something? Yeah, you'll know if you want it. Oh! We now have rares. <laughs> Alright. Next up we have Dowsing Dagger. Two mana for an artifact equipment at rare... When Dowsing Dagger enters the battlefield, target opponent creates two zero two plant creature tokens with Defender. I always find it funny how um, there are cards that make your opponents create tokens and things. Mm -hmm. uh, the equipped creature 
gets plus two plus one. It equips for two, by the way. And whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may transform Dowsing Dagger. So you're only going to get one hit in with this thing if you get a hit in past those O2 defenders. But when you do, it becomes Lost Veil. It's a land that transforms uh, from Dowsing Dagger, and you can tap it to add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. Mm. So... This is primo ramp, I guess. Although, to be fair, if you're playing this on two and equipping it the next turn, you're not really developing your board at all. No, but is it three mana of any color? It is three mana of any one color. Any one color, but it doesn't have to be that you already have. No, it can be any color. Interesting. So, what do we think? Um... I don't know, to be honest. Um, I think this is something I would put on an evasionary creature if I had one. Sure, sure. Because you can get past the O2s. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, okay, it's going to transform into something amazing. That's why they gave your opponent two chances to to block it before you get to smack them. Because when you flip it, it's just going to be too OP. Eh, I mean, three mana is pretty good. Yeah, ramping you three mana is pretty good because it doesn't count as playing your land for the turn. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. But um, and it's flavorful too. It's like it's a dowsing rod, right? So first you find plants, mm-hmm. and then they lead you to water, I guess. Mm-hmm. And um, if you're playing this in a green blue deck or a green deck where you have big stompy things, um, you're probably going to get through eventually. Mm-hmm. So I don't know things with trample, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do you pick it, though? Do you play it? Like, do you even want to play this? Mm, I want really. something else in my pack. Okay. <laughs> um, I, can, I think... I sorry. can see where it can be really good, but I prove it to me first. I think I play this if I have a, a big, dumb dino deck with a lot of things with Trample, because mm-hmm. if I want to play, you know, the 9-9 nine, nine for 8 then this would help me get there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not picking it very highly. Yeah, I and I, so. I know it's a rare, but I only want one in the deck, if that. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Not not too impressed. No. I love the card. I think it's super flavorful. All right. Primal Amulet. Four mana for an artifact at rare. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on Primal Amulet. Then if there are four or more charge counters on it, you may remove those counters and transform it. So, as of the front side, I don't like it. Four mana, uh, do nothing to make your instants and sorceries one cheaper. Mm -hmm. And then you have to cast four instants or sorceries to... Mm -hmm get this transformed. So what is it? That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It turns into Primal Wellspring. You can tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and when that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So do you know why I'm going to first pick one of these? Why? To put in my Karanos Commander deck? (laughs) Yeah, but in an actual draft, I don't see it. No, no. Unless it turns out that there's a blue-red spells deck that's very spell-heavy, which I didn't see anything. There's not, but somebody's going to make it, so I'm going to pass this down the table to Mike. Yeah, fair You're enough. welcome, Mike. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. No. Unplayable. Sorceress Spyglass. Let's see, this is a two-mana artifact that uh, at rare. As Sorceress Spyglass enters the battlefield, look at the op- an opponent's hand. Then choose any card name. Okay. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. What? You don't even get to keep them from casting it? Nope. Next card? (laughs) I'm just... Okay, so you get to look at their hand... And then you choose a card, which could be a card on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, um, 
pithing needle. Mm-hmm. No. Sideboard, mm-hmm. maybe, but no. Thaumatic Compass. Two mana for an artifact at rare. Pay three and tap it to search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. At the beginning of your end step, if you control seven or more lands, transform Thaumatic Compass. So this is interesting. It's ramping you a little bit, but you have to spend basically your whole early term to do it. Except... It's not ramping you, because you don't get to play it. You just put it in your hand. Well, okay, it's filtering out your land. Sure. It's making sure that you can cast a... Or play a land every turn. Okay. So this is a lot of work again. What do we get for it? Spires of Orozka. A rare land that taps to add colorless to your mana pool, or tap to untap target attacking creature and opponent controls... And remove it from combat. Yeah. So, um, Maze of... Maze of Ith. I don't think this is good enough. I think that's too much work in Limited. I think that, that in, our, in the last set we had, the last couple of sets we had white creatures that you played out and then you tapped down a creature. Yeah. Every combat. No, yeah. this, no, I'm passing. All right, how about a treasure map? Two mana for an artifact at rare. You pay one and tap it to scry one, then put a landmark counter on treasure map. If there are three or more landmark counters on it, remove those counters, transform treasure map, and create three colorless treasures. So what do we think of that? Just pay one, scry one. Yeah, it's all right. It's kind of just fine, right? So you get to do it three times, so you're paying five to scry three times. Yeah. Okay. But then you get three treasures and a land called Treasure Cove, which you can tap to add colorless to your mana pool or tap and sack a treasure to draw a card. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yep. there's going to be so many random treasures floating around. I played, um, what was it, Pyramid, the sunset pyramid in the last set which drew a few cards and then mm-hmm. started scrying and this seems like just straight better than that oh yeah this seems really good because if you have accrued you know five or six treasures by this point just in other play from other sources yep or just the three off of it you're drawing three cards off of this <sighs> yeah this two is drop. sweet i'm first two picking drop. this every yep. time yeah happy to do so absolutely Alright, Vanquisher's Banner is a 5 mana artifact at rare. As Vanquisher's Banner enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus 1 plus 1. So it's a Lord Banner. Uh, Whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, you draw a card. Well, that's 5 mana. I am going to pick this and go into Dinosaurs. (laughs) <laughs> go into dinosaurs? Just go into something a little later game, because that's some sweet value. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if you're able to go into the later game and draw two cards, three cards, plus all of your creatures get an extra plus one, plus one, I think that seems okay. I don't think this is limited playable. No? Um, I mean, maybe. You have to be very heavy in the Chosen Tribe to want to spend five mana on this. Mm-hmm. This is here for Commander. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I'm probably not going to do it unless I already have a bunch of a tribal deck, a heavily tribal deck. But um, but you want one for your Goblin Commander deck. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so maybe I'll pick it up anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. On to the cycle of lands. We've got Dragon Skull Summit. Drowned Catacomb, Glacial Fortress, Rootbound Crag, and Sun Petal Grove. And these are all basically the same uh, land, they just in different colors. So they enter the battlefield tapped unless you control one of their color, and then they tap for one of their color. So when did we last see this? Because I know I've played with these before. Uh, I. 
I think these came from a core set or another. They're the buddy lands or the check lands. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, they check to make sure that you've got uh, a land that's the same type as the mana that they're producing. Mm -hmm. and, and these are the allied color ones. So green-white, red-green, white-blue, blue-black, and black-red. So these are pretty good. Um, I don't know whether they'll be worth money. And um, I don't know whether you want to first pick them or not. Just because you don't know what yeah. bombs you're going to have. What color you're mm -hmm. really going to be in. I can see picking this in a weaker pack for sure. First picking. I'm, I'm going to pick these up if I know I'm one of these colors. Yeah. And if there's nothing like outrageous in the pack. But I don't imagine they're going to be like high pick value and it's until like, we find out that they're going to be worth 30 bucks a piece and then we're first picking them every day yeah well i haven't i'm not doing this review for fair enough money <laughs> money I'm doing value this review for um playability yeah yep uh and there you have it and that is our set review and draft cat has showed up just in time to give us his final thoughts mm -hmm. um so what'd you think of the set I'm so looking forward to playing oh, this. Oh, I know. It is colorful. It is full of interesting, quirky, strange things. And for a last big little set, I think it's going to be super fun. But I think the thing that I'm most excited about is it's not quite as dire as the last set. It feels much more hmm. swashbuckling. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. The colors are bright and beautiful. And mm -hmm. I think it's going to be fun. All right, so thanks for joining us today. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with the instant speed effects in case you didn't want to spend all your time uh, going <laughs> through an entire set review. It's where we really dig into the things that you need to know for your pre-release. But if you've gotten through this whole slog with us, thanks for listening or watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.